the good news. Uh, could this breakthrough COVID vaccine really mean a return to normal life in the spring? Well, with us is a stellar panel. Uh, Lord Lloyd Webber, who's taking part in another vaccine trial, the AstraZeneca Oxford University trial. Public health expert Professor Devi Sridhar, cautiously optimistic, she says, about the vaccine. New scientist columnist Graham Lawton, who is more sceptical about it, and virologist and the naked scientist Dr Chris Smith and, of course, our own Dr Hillary. So, a stellar panel. Let's go to Lord Lloyd Webber first. Andrew, uh, you've been taking part in one of the other trials, but it is believed that this uh, breakthrough by Pfizer may start to roll out some of the others, including the one you've been on. Well, I think the Oxford one is a proposed to uh, report or the idea is to report it in about three or four weeks' time. Um, the only thing I do know is, is, is that I myself have had absolutely no reaction to it. It's been... I feel absolutely fine. I've had my booster jab four weeks ago. And, um, and the other thing which I do hear, which is, of course, I mean, I, I'm hearing slightly on the grapevine, but is, is that it does work very well for older people as well. Um, so I think that the positive thing, surely, is, is that it does seem that this virus can be cured or can be prevented from its worst by a, a vaccine of some sort or another. Um, and, and quite clearly, I mean, the Pfizer one works um, pretty well. Uh, I don't think they'd release this information if it didn't. Mm. But there are clearly going to be all sorts of other approaches to it that look as if they could work equally well. Well, Dr Chris Smith, you are a virologist at Cambridge University. Um, so you know all about how viruses work and how vaccines work to stop viruses. So in this case, how does it do what it needs to? Beast, actually, this uh, vaccine. Unlike the pre previous ways of making vaccines that we've used for, in some cases, hundreds of years, where we basically grow a virus, smash it up and chemically brutalise it, and then inject the shrapnel into people, and the bits of what are left over then provoke the immune system to respond, or occasionally we grow a virus in a dish in a laboratory for donkey's years. And because dishes don't have immune systems, the viruses basically forget how to sidestep our own immune response and they become weaker and we inject that. In this case, what they've done is to take the genetic code from the virus itself that codes for the outer coat of the virus, a part of the virus called the spike or the S protein. And this is the bit that it uses to latch onto and grab hold of our cells. They've put that into an oily coat and these oily coated droplets, they're absolutely tiny. You inject into the body, cells in the body then pick up those packets, they unwrap them, remove the genetic code that's in there and read it. And they make the part of the virus encoded by that genetic code, show it to the immune system. And the immune system then learns what the virus would look like in a cell were it really in the body for real, so that you then make both antibodies and also crucially white blood cells called T cells that can form a, a mature, effective immune response were you to then encounter that threat this is for so real. It's never been done like this before. This brilliant. is so ridiculously clever. Brilliant description, by clever. the way. Yeah. Can I just congratulate you? But it's so you? dazzlingly clever. Professor Sridhar, I mean, scientists have had a hard rap uh, this year. Uh, but what a moment for science and what an extraordinary way to combat this virus. I think so. I mean, we have to remember this is a new virus. I mean, the world didn't know about this in December um, of last year. And now, look, we're just, you know, less than a year out. We have mass testing being rolled out. We have treatments. So people are surviving this. And now we have several really exciting vaccine candidates I think we will have one that's approved by early 2021. I didn't expect to see one that was so effective. Of course, we have to be cautious. This isn't going to affect our current wave, and we still have several hard months ahead of us. But people are feeling hopeless. I mean, this is a day really to say there's a way out of this, and science is going to deliver. Well, every, every Christmas, there's a Scrooge. Graham Lawton, your <laughs> Scrooge. Uh, you put a bit of a dampener on all this. Why? Well, no, I mean, I am excited and hopeful, and it is a fantastic achievement, and it is really good news for the world. But I think there are some health warnings, both about the science and the wider picture. I mean, I don't want to deflate anyone's balloon, but I think we do need some realism thrown into the mix here. I mean, one thing is these are interim results. The trial hasn't finished, and it's still time for things to go wrong. Uh, we don't know anything about the strength and duration of that vaccine-induced immunity, and we won't know that for many months. Uh, the World Health Organization says that desirable outcome is at least a year of protection. But we'll kind of accept six months minimum, but we won't know that 
until the end of January at the earliest. Uh, there are other things too. We know vaccines often perform better in trials than they do in the real world. We don't know whether this works in elderly people who are kind of the, one of the frontline people to get vaccinated. Uh, we don't know whether it works in people who've had the virus already, who are obviously going to get vaccinated as a matter of course. You know, they may end up having something called vaccine-induced uh, enhanced disease. We don't know whether that's going to happen. It's a two-shot vaccine rather than a one-shot, um, and we don't know whether there are any adverse reactions. It often takes months or years of having a vaccine on the market to, to know whether that happens. So I think there are a new number of hurdles that we still have to get over. Again, I, I don't want to be Scrooge. I'm not being Scroogey about it. I really think this no, is think a fantastic you're asking, to achievement. To be fair, you're asking perfectly legitimate questions. Go quickly to Hillary. Uh, there are two strands here, Hillary. A, what is your verdict on this news? And secondly, can you just stress how important it is that now we know the cavalry may be coming quite quickly, how crucial it is right now, mm. when we don't have a vaccine that's working yet, that people abide by the rules and we avoid as many deaths as possible in the next three to four months? Yeah, we've gone from gloom and doom to va, -va voom haven't we, overnight, and it's really good. It's the best Christmas present that uh, we could possibly have hoped for, and hopefully we'll be able to unwrap it uh, before Santa even gets here for those people most vulnerable. However, as Graham has said very eloquently, there are uh, concerns that it's going to give uh, immunity which lasts a long time. It is not an excuse for people to suddenly say it's the answer, we can eradicate this virus from the face of the earth uh, tomorrow, and we can do what we want. We will uh, get back to normal life, it looks like, by uh, spring or, or summer of next year. But there's no reason to go wild right now because this vaccine alone is not going to be the full answer. We're in a second peak of the virus now. We've got people in hospital, we've got an exhausted NHS staff and we need to not have complacency. Yeah, very good words. We need to be um, sensible. Lord but let's, Lloyd let's, Webber. let's end on a positive note because Lord Lloyd Webber, theatres have been decimated in this pandemic. Yeah. You've had to shut some of the biggest shows. Phantom, it's heartbreaking what's been going on. Finally, well, could... there is a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel and we may get back to theatres by summer. Well, that's what I've been planning for. I mean, I've decided that I'm going to go into rehearsals with my Cinderella uh, now in uh, March uh, and then we're going to open in May and I'm determined to open to May come what, whatever happens. I mean, I'm just not going to be taking no for an answer there. But I do think that what everybody is saying is actually very, very spot on. My guess is that things will start to return to normal sort of April, May time. Uh, and I think it's also worth remembering, isn't it, though, that, that although COVID-19 is a, a new virus, but it's also on, and I'm not a scientist, but the word I think they call platform, uh, that, uh, say, the Oxford vaccine, I know, has been uh, researching in, um, has found that their vaccine uh, works pretty well on other types of COVID virus. So I really do feel very, very positive that one way or the other, um, we are going to have a vaccine that works certainly by the end of next year. Let me ask you one quick question. Every panellist, very quick answer. Let's start with Debbie Sridhar. What's the one thing you've not been able to do this year that you're most looking forward to doing when this is all over? Oh, going abroad to see my family and my friends in a really hot country. I've been in Scotland through the summer, which is in... Let's say not the warmest place to be for someone from Miami. <laughs> OK, Graham Lawton? Going to see some live music. I'm desperate to see a concert. Chris Smith? Make some vitamin D. Vitamin D is very good for mm. defending you against coronavirus and other respiratory infections. You make it with the sunshine. I haven't had enough sunshine. I want to head to see my friends in Australia and make some. Totally agree. And, Andrew, we know yours is to get back in production. What about Fantastic. you, Dr Hillary? A few days on the beach with the family would be great. Yeah, I, I would love to be on the beach. <laughs> Run, Daiquiri. Nice Caribbean sun. That's what we all... We all want a bit of hope, and we've got it today. Thank yeah. you to a brilliant panel.